She made some frantic gestures to get it to rise again. It flopped about, tangled itself, and lay still. There was a bit more applause, nervous and sporadic. Oh, sorry. Don't be able to... Don't seem to be able to get the hang of it today, she muttered. The judges went into a huddle. I reckon that frog did really well, said Nanny, more loudly than was necessary. The wind, so contrary a little while ago, blew sharper now. What might be called the psychic darkness of the event was being enhanced by real twilight. The shadow of the bonfire loomed on the far side of the field. No one as yet had the heart to light it. Almost all the non-witches had gone home. Anything good about the day had long drained away. The circle of judges broke up, and Miss Earwig advanced on the nervous crowd, her smile only lightly waxen at the corners. "'What a difficult decision it has been,' she said brightly. "'But what a marvelous turnout, too! It really has been a most tricky choice. Between me and a frog that lost its whistle and got its foot stuck in a banjo,' thought Nanny. She looked sidelong at the faces of her sister witches. She'd known them, some of them for sixty years. If she'd ever read books, she'd been able to read the faces just like their faces just like one. "'We all know who won, Mrs. Earwig,' she said, interrupting the flow. "'What do you mean, Mrs. Ogg?' "'Well, there ain't a witch here who could get her mind right today,' said Nanny. "'And most of them bought Lucky Charms, too. "'Witches buying Lucky Charms?' And several women stared at the ground. "'I don't know why everyone seems—' "'Oh, wait. "'I don't know why everyone seems to be so afraid of Miss Weatherwax. "'I'm certainly not. "'You think she's put a spell on you, then?' Oh, a pretty sharp one by the feel of it, said Nanny. Look, Miss Earwig, no one's won. Not with the stuff we've managed today. We all know it, so let's just go home. Certainly not. I paid ten dollars for this cup, and I mean to present it. The dying leaves shivered on the trees. The witches drew together. Branches rattled. Well, it's the wind, said Nanny. Oh, that's all. And then Granny was simply there. It was as if they'd just not noticed that she'd been there the whole time. She had the knack of fading into the foreground. I just thought I'd come to see who won, she said. Join in the applause and so on. Latisse advanced on her, wild with rage. Have you been getting into people's heads? she shrieked. Oh, how could I do that, Mrs. Earwig? said Granny meekly. Passed all them lucky charms? You're lying! Nanny Og heard the indrawn breaths, and hers was the loudest. Witches lived by their words. I don't lie, Mrs. Earwig. Do you deny that you set out to ruin my day? Some of the witches at the edge of the crowd stared back, star started to back away. I'll, I'll grant my jam isn't to everyone's taste, but I never began, you know, began Granny in a modest little tone. You've been putting affluence on everyone. I just set out to help. You can ask anyone. You did it. Ad admit it! Mrs. Earwig's voice was as shrill as a gull. And I di certainly didn't do any... <laughs> Granny's head turned as the slap came. For the moment, no one breathed. No one moved. She lifted a hand slowly and rubbed her cheek. You know you could have done it easily, screamed Latisse. It seemed to Nanny that Latisse's scream echoed off the mountains. The cup dropped from her hands and crunched on the stubble. Then the tableau unfroze. A couple of her sister witches stepped forward, put their hands on Latisse's shoulders, and was pulled gently and unprotestingly away. Everyone else waited to see what Granny Weatherwax would do. She raised her head. I hope Miss Earwig is all right, she said. She seemed a bit distraught. Nanny picked up the abandoned cup and tapped it with her finger. Hmm, she said. Oh, just played it, I reckon. If she paid ten dollars for it, oh, that lady was robbed. She tossed it to Gammer Beavis, who fumbled it out of the air. Can you give that back to her tomorrow, Gammer? Gammer nodded, trying not to catch Granny's eye. Uh, still, we don't have to let it spoil everything, Granny said pleasantly. Let's have a proper ending to the day, hmm? Traditional, you know, roast potatoes and marshmallows and old stories around the fire. And forgiveness. Let's let bygones be bygones. Nanny could feel the sudden relief spreading out like a fan. 
the witches seemed to come alive at the breaking of the spell that had never actually been there in the first place. There was a gen general straightening up and the beginnings of a bustle as they headed for the saddlebags on their broomsticks. "'Mr. Hopcroft gave me a whole stack of spuds,' said Nanny as conversation rose around them. "'I'll go drag them over. Can you get the fire lit, Esme?' A sudden change in the air made her look up. Granny's eyes gleamed in the dusk. Nanny knew well enough to fling herself to the ground. Granny Weatherwax's hand curved through the air like a comet, and the spark flew out, crackling. The bonfire exploded. A blue-white flame shot up through the stacked branches and danced into the sky, etching shadows on the forest. It blew off hats and overturned tables, and formed figures and castles and scenes from famous battles, and joined hands and danced in a ring. It left a purple, purple image on the eye that burned into the brain, and settled down, and was just a bonfire. I never said nothing about forgetting, said Granny. Granny Weatherwax and Nanny Og walked home through the dawn. Their boots kicked up the mist. It had, on the whole, been a good night. After some while, Nanny had said, That wasn't nice what you'd done. I ain't done nothing. Well, yeah, it wasn't nice what you didn't do. It was like pulling away someone's chair when they're expecting you to sit down. People who don't look where they're sitting should stay stood up, said Granny. There was a brief pattering on the leaves, one of those very brief showers you get when a few raindrops don't want to bond with the group. Well, all right, Nanny conceded, but it was a bit cruel. Right, said Nanny, and some people might think it was a bit nasty. Right. Ranny, Nanny shivered, the thoughts that had gone through her head in those seconds after Pusey had screamed. I gave you no cause, said Granny. I put nothing in anyone's head that weren't there already. Sorry, Esme. Right. But Latisse didn't mean to be cruel, Esme. I mean, she's spiteful and bossy and silly, but... You've been known me since we was girls, right? Granny interrupted. Through thick and thin, good and bad. Yeah, of course. And you never sank to saying, I'm telling you this as a friend. Did you? Nanny shook her head. It was a telling point. No one even remotely friendly would say a thing like that. What's empowering about witchcraft anyway? said Nanny. It's a daft sort of word. Oh, search me, said Nanny. I did start out in witchcraft to get boys to tell you the truth. Eh, you think I don't know that? What did you start out to get, Esme? Grady stopped and looked up at the frost sky and then down at the ground. I don't know, she said. Even, I suppose. And that, Nanny thought, was that. Deer bounded away as they arrived at Granny's cottage. There was a stack of firewood piled up neatly by the back door, and a couple of stacks on the doorstep. One contained a large cheese. Looks like Mr. Hopcroft. Oh, it looks like Mr. Hopcroft and Mr. Porchick have been here, said Nanny. <laughs> said Granny. And he looked at the carefully let yet badly written piece of paper attached to the second sack. Dear Mistress Weatherwax, I would be most grateful if you let me name this new championship variety Fme Weatherwax. Yours, in hopefully good per health, Percy Hopcroft. Well, well, well. I wonder what gave him that idea. Oh, I can't imagine, said Nanny. I just would bet you can't, said Granny. She sniffed suspiciously, tugged at the sack string, and pulled out an Esme Weatherwax. It was rounded, very slightly flattened, and pointy at one end. It was an onion. Nanny Og swallowed. I told him not to. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, nothing. Granny Weatherwax turned the onion round and round, while the world, via the medium of Nanny Og, awaited its fate. Then she seemed to reach the decision she was comfortable with. Very useful vegetable, the onion, she said at last. Firm. Sharp. Oh, it's good for the system, said Nanny. Keeps well. Adds flavor. Hot and spicy, said Nanny, losing track of the metaphor in the flood of relief. Nice with cheese. And, ah, we don't need to go that far, said Granny Weatherwax, putting it carefully back in the sack. She sounded almost amicable. You coming up for a cup of tea, Gaitha? Oh, I'd better be getting along. Fair enough. Granny started to close the door and then stopped and opened it again. Granny could see one blue eye watching her through the crack. I was right, though, wasn't I? said Granny. It wasn't a question. Nanny nodded. Right. Or Nanny nodded. 
Right, she said. Hm, that's nice, said Granny.